Hi folks and welcome to my tutorial on uh, test meters. I'm just getting prepared and set up and ready. And uh, basically uh, we're going to cover two types of test meter in this tutorial. We're going to cover the, and the old and the old style analog meter. And we're going to cover the, or I should say traditional analog meter. And we're also going to cover the more modern digital meter. We'll start with the digital meter and we want to put this onto volts and what we're going to do we're going to measure 5 volts. So we've got our pro, we've got our power supply with 5 volts going in, 5 volts coming out sorry and there we go 5.4, 5 point yeah 5 5.4, 5.04 5 that's good enough and that concurs with the power supply and this meter is actually fairly accurate. It's my uh, my go-to meter. You all know that. Now, the reason why I like and that the reason the reason why I like a, an analog meter as well as a digital meter, I like to have an analog an analog meter for one purpose. We've got our 5.4 going in there. Yeah. Now that's a stable voltage. But what if it wasn't stable? What if it was doing all this malarkey? See? Can you make a or tail of that? Yeah, I sure as hell can. Put us back down to where we were. That's as near as damn it. Uh, just come down slightly. There we go. That's. <laughs> can never get it back right. There we go. There we go. Right. That's one thing a digital meter can't tell you. A digital meter, unless it's got a scale on it as well, a digital but which most don't, a digital meter cannot tell you about a fluctu what a fluctuating voltage is doing. Now if we go to DC, which we are on, we go to we go to volts on our traditional AVO meter, we want to be on the 10 volt range. Uh, and I can't see the ranges on this that well because uh, that's the Jesus. That's the that's the ten volt range. Now, uh, if I just put that probe aside and get the analog meter. Now, and we'll do we'll, we'll do the same test. There we go. Five volts. Uh, you read it from you read you read it from the DC scale here. So you know you actually subtract your voltage, and that's uh, that's giving us five volts. That equates to five volts. Or you can put it on the hundred volt scale. And that will give you just under 50, which is 5 volts. So, if we go back to the, and we go to the other one, it flicks right over, which is too much. Anyway, uh, what does capacity do? Nothing on here. Anyway, now if we go back to, uh, our, if we go back to our, meet, our power supply, now let's just get the meter in view. I trust you can all see that. That's the needle there. So if, we, if I now if I now throw this the voltage about, you can see. No matter what I do, You can see that something's wrong because the voltage is moving about. So if we put it back on there, and that's that, that's definitely our five volts, uh, which is right. Um, you know, and that's where that's where that's where an analog meter comes into its own. This analog meter needs a service. It's a 
switches are a bit dirty I'm gonna do it in a bit I might take you through that we'll see but uh, when it comes to accuracy a digital meter is always better you know I'd rather take me I'd rather take me voltage measurements with that than with that but in the time before this that ruled until they brought the AVO the AVO 8 out of course uh, mine's an AVO 7 anyway and I only gave a fiver for it at the swap mate now Let's move on to resistors. Now we've got a resistor here, and uh, this is this is an 80 ohm resistor. Uh, this is an 80 ohm resistor. So if we put the so if we put the meter, we leave it leave it with DC where it is. But first of all, let's turn off our power supply. Disconnect our probes. I nearly switched it then with the. Always remember to disconnect your meter before you change the range. Now we want to go to ohms. And I want to put it on. There we go. I've put it for this, I've put it on uh, times. Can't read the ranges. Times one hundred thousand, I think that fucking is. Anyway, so what we'll do? We'll measure the we'll measure the resistor with the analog meter to begin with. And that's coming in at ninety ohms. Let's make sure we're zeroed. We're not quite zeroed, so let's bring it in a bit. There we are. This meter needs cleaning. There we are, that's zeroed enough. Right. Right, we're coming in at just over 90 ohms. On an 80 on an on an 80 ohm resistor, that's not bad. It's not bad for an old meter, you know. That's uh, you know, it's uh, you know, it's 10 ohms out. Uh, but there again, resistors are tolerance. The tolerances on them can be uh, five, five, ten, or twenty percent out anyway. So you know, but if we now go to the digital meter. I'm only talking about meters in this tutorial. Other test, other test instruments, I'll do separate videos on. Um, now, now let's see what the let's see what the resistor tells us on this meter. Let's put it on ohms. This automatically sorts everything out for you as well. A digital meter, the analog meter is a bit more involved, and that's 81.8 ohms. So we're nine ohms out. Uh, this is nine ohms out, which is not bad. It's not bad for an old meter, you know. I can accept that. In fact, if I came across a resistor using this meter, I would actually leave the resistor in uh, because nine ohms is neither in nor there. Now speakers. Speakers are measured in impedance, but a speaker is technically an inductor, but your meter reads it in ohms. Now, we've got here, we've got here, turn the meter back on, we've got here a 4 ohm speaker, it's supposed to be 4 ohm, but I think these read about 6 or something fucking daft. There we go. 0 0.7 ohms. They're supposed to be 4 ohms. Actually, I, I think they are anyway. <laughs> I think they're supposed to be 4 ohms. Either 4 or 8. Anyway, that's what that speaker's telling us. Let's look at the other speaker because I've got two exactly the same. 
So they, they probably are eight ohms. I've, I've not looked at the back of them for ages, but this tells us, doesn't it? Yeah, eight ohms. Yeah. Now, let's test the same speaker with the analog meter. Let's change the range. I'm just making a video. I'm, do, I'm doing a, a tutorial on the multimeter. Oh, well, that's nice. I'll go in there. I don't I'll be in in a minute. Okay. And that one's reading actually. That one's reading seven ohms. Well, just over five. So I'd say, you know, yeah, that's not bad. So yeah, we're we're getting the. Uh, we're getting what? About six ohms. So that's not bad. I can accept that. Now let's just have a look at the other speaker to, uh, just to, because they're exactly the same and they should give exactly the same reading. So we'll just give our other speaker in it a, a quick test. See this is really aimed at people who, there we are, exactly the same. So they're, they're actually, uh, they're, they are actually 8 ohm speakers but they're coming in at 7. So that's good enough. You know, but uh, for those, you know, th th this tutorial is really aimed at those who, uh, it's aimed at beginners who haven't really got to grips with the multimeter. Right, I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to eat my magnum, I'll be back in a minute. My daughter's just brought me a magnum. Right, we're back. If you hear a voice in the background, it's my daughter, she's sat in my front room and right that's me kicking the tripod right where were we now let's test a diode on the analog meter show you how to test a diode this tutorial and will remind us for beginners uh i'm not trying to tell people who uh, know, know about it, how to suck eggs. Uh, it is purely for beginners, people who are just getting into it, or people who are unsure. And basically a diode, it's a semiconductor, therefore it should only read one way. There we are. Turn it around. Nothing. And that's how you test the diode on the analog meter. <laughs> Get a reading that way. You get fuck all that way. Now, if we do go to the digital meter and we do the same test now we're on ohms that's jumping around a bit but there again probably because of picking up resistance off me nothing that side. And we get our reading that side. But digital meters have a diode test. They actually do have a diode tester in them. So if I just put the meter there, what it'll do, it'll put 5.19 5 millivolts into the diode. And that tells us that the diode's good. If we flip the diode over, nothing. And that's what you should get from a diode on a digital meter. Now, if we find ourselves a transistor, 
I'm trying to think where there's a transistor. Here's one. Oh, look at that. Just conveniently have a transistor. I don't know if it's a good one. But there again. Uh, it's part of the fun, isn't it? Finding out. So we've got a transistor here. The pull these insulators off it. There we go. Right. I don't, I don't know which is the emitter or the base on this, but I know the case is collector, it always is. Or in my in my in my experience it always is. And probably in everybody else's experience. So what we'll do, we'll connect we'll show you how to test the transistor with the analog meter. See we've got a connection there. Right, move this down the scale because we're, we're up a bit there. There we are. Right, reads on that leg, reads on that leg. Now we know the transistor's not short because the needle isn't going all the way across. If I short the probes, then it goes all the way across. Now if we swap the probes over. To the other side, we get nothing. So we go back this way. Oh, nothing on that one either. Something on it. We had something on it before. Well, that was why. Put the leads on the wrong way around. So. That way is nothing. Nothing. that way that tests your transistor so you know your transistor's working <coughs> so we know the transistor's okay or at least it's it's okay on the meter I mean it could test all it could test now it could t you could put it in something that could could be faulty but I had that problem with it. shut up uh, in. I had that problem the other week, if you remember, with the ITT amp. It was, uh, the transistor tested okay out of the circuit, but in the circuit it was playing up. So now if we use the diode tester, 4.5, 4, 6.07, 6.07. Now if we go the other way, whoops, nothing, nothing, there we go you see, now we go down to ohms in case you don't have a transistor checker on your meter. Go to ohms. Nothing. Nothing. Point eight ohms. Point four. Or four four point. 4.40 uh, mega ohms so yeah I'd say it's a good transistor I do have a transistor checker for checking these but I will show we'll do that at a later date so we've done the resistor we've done 
a we've done a resistor, we've done a diode, and we've done a transistor. Now let's do a capacitor. Now this meter doesn't really do capacitors, but you should be able to get an idea because of the way it behaves. There we go. It will charge up and then it will say open line. And then if we go the other way, or the other way even. Put it on the other way. Works the opposite way. There you are. That gives you an idea that capacitor could be okay. It's certainly not open. It's certainly not open circuit, and it's not short. Now, if we go to the analog meter. same component nothing I think the meter just flinches slightly uh, it's come down at a range if I can yeah It's going all the way over, but that's no problem. Nothing. The meter just flickers slightly. I think it does. Let me just turn it to me so I can have a look. Yeah. The meter just jumps slightly. Uh, so that tells you... <laughs> now the capacitor's not short and it's not open. So, so we've done we've done we've done a, a resistor, a diode, a transistor, and we've done a couple of speakers on both meters. We've done DC voltages, uh, AC voltages. I won't cover because you know you set your meter to you set your meter to your highest. AC range if you're looking for 240 volts and you check 240 volts uh, in fact what we'll do we'll actually do a quick AC test uh, we can use the Variac uh, if the Variac's plugged in which it isn't Let's unplug that music centre for a minute Variac's now plugged in Set our meter to AC and we want the voltage range, we'll go to 1000 volts and we'll pop our probes into our Variac. And what we'll do, we'll, we can actually come down a range. There we are. We're putting what? I'm just looking for the AC scale. Not at the very fucking top, is it? Where I can't know. That's ohms at the top. DC. Right, so. It must be. So we're putting. Set this so it's putting 50 that, that's 
50 volts. So, oh, I've pulled the fucking, fucking hell. Oh yeah, that's what I wanted to do. <clears throat> so we now plug our, our digital meter in. that up there now the digital this digital meter the, my meter sets it all up itself the bench meter there doesn't and that's why I'm using this because most meters these days do set it up themselves so the very axe on so it's winding up and we're at 35 volts there so let's take it to around 40 So let's take it to around 50. There we go. Fifty volts exactly on the uh, on the analog on the digital meter, it's fifty volts. So we we'll leave that at fifty volts. Turn the variac off. Now we can connect our, our analog meter. And see if see if that concurs with the digital meter. I don't expect it to, but you never know. It might be a bit more accurate on AC than it was on DC, but it weren't that far out on DC. Let's put our probes back into the variac. Let's turn this on. There we are, and we're just under fifty volts. We are what? Yeah, that's, show, that's showing us uh, about 45 volts. So that's about 45 volts. So it is a little bit out. But there again, <coughs> like I'm always saying, that's like I'm always saying, uh, you know, uh, the, the older meters, they weren't as accurate as the new ones are. But they're still good enough to get the job done. I mean, if you're 5 volts down, you wouldn't worry about it. Uh, if you're using one of these, you wouldn't worry about it because you're going to expect it to be a little bit lower. Um, you know, this probably needs a service as well, but, you know. Uh, but I think it's performing quite well for what it is. And uh, where do we want to go next? <clears throat> we've done AC voltages, we've done DC voltages, we've tested... The most common components that you would test. I haven't got any inductors, but there again, inductors are just a short circuit, more or less, anyway. Um, and uh, we've tested the resistor. Uh, a fuse that's just a short circuit. Continuity. Now you can't. You can do continuity on here, but you don't get a bleep. Uh, continuity on here if we get a component there we are right so put it back onto back onto there onto DC and turn this back to ohms That's continuity. So you connect them two together or across a piece of wire like I've done there. It's continuity. That's you just don't get the bleep. Now on a on a modern meter you can do it the same way. Would help if I pick the right leads up. And Put the meter there, so we can see, all see what's happening. See, 
your three zeros into indicates continuity but in case you don't want to look at your meter on these you can press the ACDC button whilst on ohms and it'll switch between ohms or continuity there we are we're on continuity that indicates that we're getting yeah now if you try testing a diode on continuity it doesn't work see nothing that end and nothing that end so you can't test the diode that way not on this meter anyway we'll just do that again just in case no but I'm definitely right there we are, you see nothing so and a transistor you can't do I don't think a lot of these meters have a transistor tre checker built in you got an M you got an M NPN and PNP uh, and it tells you your emitter base collector and stuff information there I never use that you'll see why in the next video see nothing there oh, that, oh that's me shorting it on the case nothing there nothing there That's me showing out nothing there, nothing there. Right. Right, so that's that that, that that that's that that that's your two most common forms of a test instrument, test meter. Uh, I, I do suggest that as well as having a digital meter you also have an analog meter as well uh, because although you won't use an analog meter much to turn that off because it's heavy on the batteries my meter uh, because you won't use a meter that much uh, an analog meter that much you know it's still worth having one in you you know in your workshop it's still worth being there because there are times when you do use it. I mean, I don't use this that often, but I do use it. Um, I'm going to give it a service, and what I'll do, I'll do, I'll get the service information, and we'll we'll try and go through that together and service this old girl. Uh, <coughs> see if I can perform a service on it. If not, then I'll find somebody who can. Um, because I, I'd like to have it serviced. Uh, I mean it's pretty accurate now for what it is but it's not as accurate as this but there again it probably never was you know but uh, but that's uh, that's basically in a nutshell that's basically your test meter you know you basically you want it for resistance you want it for inductance well if it reads inductance Basic, basically the functions you want your meter to perform is resistant is resistance which is ohms voltage ac and dc uh, you want to get a meter with the highest voltage ranges you can uh, all my meters go up to uh, around about around around about a thousand volts uh, you're never going to test that much voltage but you never know it's always worth it you know uh, most most meters stop at about 750 AC digital ones anyway. Uh, this analog, this old analog meter here, the Save 07. Uh, I need to repaint the ranges in. You know, I'm going to do that when I do the service. I'm going to because they're all sort of like indented in. They're all sort of embossed in. So I should be able to just paint over them with white paint and then just wipe the excess off. You know. Uh, paint that can that'll actually come off rather than knack of the control up uh, I've got some somewhere uh, I've used it on radios and you wipe it off after you've done it and it leaves the indentation leaves the paint in the indentations or even a white permanent marker I used a black permanent marker on the bush on the on the bush uh, VHF 41 <laughs> As you remember seeing, if you've seen the video on the res restoration of that particular radio, 
right in the next video I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it there on test meters because I think I've covered uh, I've covered AC voltage fluctuating DC I've covered AC voltage I've covered DC voltage I've covered fluctuating voltage I've covered Hang on. You heard that dopey fucker. Owls at the ice cream man. Well there we go. Probably wants an ice cream. <laughs> anyway. Uh, the, other, the other important thing is meter accessories. Um, let's talk about meter accessories. <coughs> now these probes here, uh, not these, that's the AVO, let's just separate the probes. Now the, the AVO 7, I haven't really got any accessories for the probes. Uh, I do need to buy a new set of probes for it actually. I want to buy a set of these. And the reason why, I want to buy a set of these for the AVO 7. And the reason why, we'll just bring them into shot. They look like an ordinary set of meter probes, but they're not, look. You can screw the probe off. And there's a few accessories. Uh, we've got some clips. Where's the black one gone? It was here a minute ago, and I threw it back up there, didn't I? Because I couldn't screw it onto here. Uh, no mind the red one. Oh, there it is. No, it ain't. There it is. The red one will do. I'm only demonstrating. Now, what you do, you would screw that... onto your probe and you can you can then clip that to your chassis and to your ground on your chassis and then you can uh, you put you can poke around then you know without having to jam it in somewhere you can just clip it anywhere convenient and then just put and just poke around because you are supposed to use when you're working on valve it's best to keep one hand uh, what, what what one hand in the chassis and one hand out uh, on high voltage stuff, uh, always keep one hand sort of in your pocket or out of the way of the chassis clip to the ground and probe away with your positive right the other thing is, but the other difference between the two meters is digital meters can read negative voltage Analog meters can't read negative voltage. Not this one, anyway. I don't know whether they made any that can, but uh, these with a bit of dust on. There we go. Uh, this can't read analog voltage. If you put an uh, this can't read negative voltage. If you put the probes the wrong way around in this meter, the needle just goes backwards, and that tells you nothing. But on the on the uh, digital meter. When you test the negative voltage, a minus comes up here in your display. You get a minus in your display here, or wherever it, wherever the manufacturer put the minus, and it'll say minus maybe 10 volts, and that's a negative. That means you're on a negative rail. Uh, if there's no minus there, you're on a positive rail, and that's basically. Uh, one of the good points on the digital meters. I mean, the, the digital meters have a lot of good points above the analog meters. Analog meters look nice, but they're not as accurate. Uh, they can do they can do fluctuating voltages, and but your, your, your digital meter can do everything this can do. This can do everything and more. That this can do but this can't do fluctuating voltages because it's just a series of numbers and you can't you can't work it out so basically you know you know your voltage is unstable but you don't know you know you you, you, you know you can't be sure but when you put it on air and you see the meter swinging about and then you know for sure that your voltage is unstable so that's the two sorts of most common meters in the next video we're going to look at dedicated testers 
the peak atlas double uh, the peak atlas dedicated component analyzers we're going to look at those in the next video and we'll you know we'll do we'll do some capacitor esr checks and stuff like that and uh you know we'll look at a whole range of components and speakers and inductors stuff like that kind of thing anyway i'm going to end it i'm going to leave this video here because yeah i think it's gone far i think it's gone on long enough i'm going to leave this video here and uh i hope you enjoy the tutorial i hope you get something from it if there's anything i've got wrong then yeah you know if anyone's you know more experienced than me and they think i've got something wrong then yeah by all means don't be rude about it but tell me you know uh you know tell me i'm wrong if i if i've said something wrong and tell me and you know because because knowledge is power i mean i don't know everything i don't even pretend to know everything although people think i'm a know-all what I don't at all. Yes, you do. And you keep your two penny worth out. No. Anyway, I've said it before and I'll say it again. One. If I want to listen to an arsehole, I'll fart. You do. <laughs> what, want to listen to an arsehole, I'll fart? No, you just fart all the time anyway. Yeah, well, it means my body's healthy. Anyway, getting back to it, if there's something I don't know or something I've got wrong, then yeah, please tell me. Uh, because like I say, uh, contrary to what my daughter in there says, I don't know everything. I don't even think I know everything. I'm still learning as well. But, uh, I think I've covered just about everything. I mean, what else can you cover on a metre? I mean, I've covered voltages, resistances, transistors, diodes, speakers, AC and DC voltages, fluctuating volume. I've covered the whole bloody lot, I think. I think I've been fairly ready for her. Uh, I'm used to using this meter. I'm not used to using this because I don't use it that often. And, and like I say, it does need a service. And uh, this meter is a lot older than me. It's a lot older than most people. Uh, this is getting on for what? It's got to be, it's got to be around 70 years old, hasn't it? The Avo 7. I'll have to find out when they stop making them and see if there's a date code somewhere in this thing. Anyway, folks, you all have a good day and uh, thank you very much for watching. And don't forget, join me on the next one when it will be dedicated, when it will be dedicated component analyzers. And we'll, uh, We'll take a look at them, I'll tell you about the company that make them and show you what they're all about and explain why they are worth every single penny. Catch you later folks, bye for now.